Back with another Fixing Faulty eBay Junk video and this time I've got myself a controller an SNK Neo Geo CD controller to be precise and I won this for £6.55 and the postage was basically £4 but as you can see here four parts are not working so a faulty controller and you might be thinking to yourself what you paid ten fifty for a, a broken controller an old broken controller but with these things here they tend to sell for quite a lot of money um, second hand you're talking around 30 to 35 pounds and if you want one brand new boxed and everything you're basically gonna have to spend at least 40 to 55 pounds when you include the shipping and everything so to get one here for 1050 even though it's faulty is quite a good deal I should be able to, to fix it up and I've already received it in the mail I've got the bag for it just down here which I'll show you. So I've not opened it up yet. Uh, I received it actually a couple of weeks ago, just not had a chance to, to get around to it yet, but I'll do that in just a moment. But this is the the type of controller here. This is my other one. I bought this one on eBay Faulty a few months ago and managed to get this working again. So I'm hoping that the one I've just bought is going to be the, the same kind of deal. But the really nice thing about these is that they have a micro switched d-pad on it so it's somewhere between a, a proper arcade stick and a, an old school uh, joypad they're, they're really nice for using with like fighters that sort of thing I'll be using uh, well I use this one with my MVS board which I'm currently trying to get consoleized but yeah I've got the other one now so I'll be able to hook up two and use it as a, a proper console with two uh, players but very nice controllers, they, they fit your hand perfectly and they're, they're great for uh, your arcade style game. So what I'll do is I'll get this thing opened up and uh, we'll see what kind of condition it's in. It looks a bit grubby in the, the photo there. Uh, the description down here just says Neo Geo controller. Uh, could not get anything out of it last time I tried it on my AES console. So uh, yeah, let's open it up and see what we're dealing with. So let's take a look at it. And it doesn't seem to be uh, obviously broken or anything, which is a good a good start. The cable isn't um, split or anything like that, which is always a good sign. But the yeah, it's pretty filthy. Yeah, and the the D-pad there is not really moving as freely as it should. It's um, really stiff and not clicking the way it should either. I don't think it's returning to centre either, so that'll need attention. Start, A, B, C, D, I'll oh, seem fine. The select button looks like it's um, been pushed down and it's not jumped back up again. That'll need attention. Uh, yeah, so the next thing I'm going to do here is just hook it up to the MVS and quickly test it and see if any of these buttons are, are registering or not, if the controller is registering at all. So I'll go do that. To test the controller, what I've done is I've hooked up my MVS and I've also connected the controller into the harness as well. I've switched this on without a game in the cartridge slot and what that'll do is it'll bring up a menu screen where you can test and configure various aspects of the board. And one of the things you can do is check the controller or the controls and as you can maybe see here, it's telling me that the left direction is already engaged, but if you look at the controller here, I'm not actually touching it, so that's a problem straight away. And check the rest of the direction, so if I hit up, that'll register. Down doesn't do anything, and uh, yeah, right doesn't seem to be doing anything either. Let's check these face buttons, so A, B, C and D, they're all working. And select. And I've got select uh, wired up to the coin number one for credit, so that's working as well. And if I hit start, it should take me to the next screen, so that's working as well. So, so far I know that it's the D-pad. The controller's working, it's just the D-pad doesn't seem to be registering all the, the dire directions properly. So I'm going to take this apart and see if it just needs a good clean and uh, a refurbishment to get it working again. Taking these things apart very easy, there's only a few screws in the back you need to deal with and you just use a regular 
Phillips or crosshead screwdriver like this one here. So there's one, two, three, four, and five, and then that's pretty much it. Back should just pop off now. Let's carefully remove that. And there we go. And the next thing you'll need to do is remove the the joystick or the joypad, directional pad, whatever you want to call it here. And to do that, instead of from this side levering underneath it and popping this cap off, what you need to do is just turn it over and gently pull the PCB up here and that'll push the uh, this cap here off without damaging it. So if you go in here with a, a screwdriver or um, something to pry it open with, you'll end up damaging the, the plastic. So as easy as that, just gently pull it and it should pop off. You've got your buttons, your face buttons there. I'm going to take all these apart, uh, take it to this link and give it a good clean. You can see all the, the dirt that's accumulated in there. It's kind of disgusting. So that'll need cleaned as well as the buttons as well. They're a bit grubby. Same goes for the, the rubber membranes. These will need cleaned. The contacts will need uh, tidied up. You can see there. They're all dirty and they won't be making the best possible electrical contact, so they need clean. The main part I'm interested in here is this, and this is the directional pad. This is the little micro-switched stick that controls everything. And there's four micro-switches, one, two, three, and four. And they're in an upright uh, position, and when you push these here, it moves the stick and it moves a little spring-loaded, I don't know what you call that, a little spring-loaded arm and it presses against the, the micro switch. But what happens over time, the wear on the, the plastic components creates dust and also just regular household dust as well gets in here and it stops them from making a proper electrical contact and it stops the stick from moving properly as well. So what you need to do is just take the whole thing apart and clean it out. Um, and that's what I'm going to do now. The stick just pops out the back like that. And these should just unclip. just lifts off. You have to watch for bits going flying here. And as you can see you've got these little uh, contact pins here that are spring-loaded. I've got it disassembled now and what I'm gonna have to do is gently push these little micro switches back and remove this little white piece in here and get in behind it and clean it all out. I won't show you exactly how to do this. There's a few tutorials online I think you can see a few videos on YouTube that show you exactly how to do this but that's what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to cut this little section out here uh, and remove it and give it a good clean hopefully that'll bring it back to life that's a little disc out there and it's looking like the, the actual metal contact that's behind there has uh, been quite badly damaged so I might have to replace that and I'll just try and pop this out here this should be a little dome shaped piece of metal but you can see there it's all bent out of shape so it's not springing back into the the correct form when the, the button's been pressed. In fact actually looks like maybe someone's been in here before and tried to repair this so that may be why it's uh, as damaged as it is. So luckily I actually kept the little contact pads from the previous repair job I did in one of these controllers. That controller I showed you at the beginning of this video and what usually ends up happening with these is just one or two of the directional uh, buttons will stop working or will, will wear out. Usually the like the left and the down or something like that. And what you can do is you can just repair the one that's faulty and leave the rest. But what I did in the last one is actually removed all of them. And I think one of these is completely gone. I'm not sure which one. It might be that one there. But what I did was I just replaced these little contact discs here with ones from a Game Boy Advance SP motherboard. It has a quite a similar type of contact pad that sits on the, the top of the motherboard for your uh, your directional pad. So I just removed those and put them in my other controller and that's what I used. But I removed all the discs obviously and I've kept them here. So a couple of these should be just as good uh, as new, or not quite as good as new, but 
still fully functional. So I've just replaced the, the two of the directions on this that are uh, seeming to be worn out and that should fix the problem. The most annoying thing about these micro switches is you can't seem to buy them anywhere. They're a really strange size. I think they must be proprietary uh, SNK components because your regular micro switch just looks like this thing here. Your little clicky micro switch but it's much smaller than these ones here and these are uh, designed to sit upright as well in this special housing so unfortunately what you can't do is just go out and buy replacements and solder the new ones in which would make life a lot easier what you actually have to do is cut the, the discs out here and it, it just causes a bit of a, a headache but uh, yeah that's what you yeah, that's the main reason why I'm not just desoldering these and putting new switches in I've now got the D-pad fully reassembled, cleaned and reconditioned and it sounds like it's back to its working self. You can hear it's nice and clicky in all four directions. So the last thing for me to do now is just clean the outer housing here, get this all scrubbed up in the sink, same with the buttons as well, and then reassemble it and test it out and hopefully that's it all working again. That's it, fully reassembled, cleaned and ready to test. It seems to be working fine. You can hear the D-pad is nice and clicky and it isn't getting caught or stuck in any position. So just need to try it out, make sure it's working and play a few games. I'm back at the test screen here, so let's just make sure this is working properly. So up, down, left and right, they're all working fine. You can even do diagonals now and the D-pad isn't getting stuck in any position, it's returning to centre. So it's all working nice and properly again. A, B, C, D, they all work and select. So last thing to do now is just try out a couple of games. So, as you can see, it's working fine. And for 10.50, I think it was a pretty good deal. It took me about half an hour to fix, but yeah. So, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you again soon.